is. <coughs> and you have these in your, your kit. This is the cap, it says triplon no touch suction catheter. Okay. Are the nurses gonna look at me like I'm crazy when I ask somebody to come in to help me with tracing? Yeah. But I know in the book it says you should have a second person holding the collar in place, hmm? the neck piece in place while you clean it so it doesn't move. You should have a second person right. holding to stabilize that. Right. Okay. Your kits with your suction catheter will have a pair of sterile blocks in them. Um, mine does not. So I'm going to put this in here. This one has this, which is a little box that pops open. Now, I have bare hands, correct? Mm -hmm. So the outside of this is contaminated, correct? Mm -hmm. So you just pinch the sides together and you have a little box. And that is useful. And this is for our saline. So I'm going to take my saline and I'm going to palm the label. Okay, thank you. Couldn't find a Christmas tree. So I'm a bigger one. And lay two. Okay, <coughs> super. I'm going to lift it. And then when you pour this in, this makes the liner in the bag collapse. So we have our solution in there. That's going to be for cleaning out our tubing. Because can you imagine that it would get kind of junky? Mm -hmm. Now this is a suction canister and things that we suction out of the lungs will go into this suction canister. This mounts on the wall. Remember last week when we showed you the oxygen setup and it had the vacuum? Mm -hmm. This one would be hooked up to the vacuum. Okay, and this has a disposable inner, and this says do not discard. Some of these can be disposable where you throw away the whole thing, but this one you throw away the liner. And your tubing will put <coughs> this, and, it, and it's all labeled. It says to vacuum. Patient, so it gives you everything you need to know. So this will hook onto this. Do you think this is going to be sterile or non-sterile? Non-sterile. Non -sterile. <coughs> See, I'm going to have you just hold that so it won't fall off. Now I'm going to put on my sterile gloves because I've got my saline poured. We're going to pretend like these are sterile. Okay. In your kit, you'll have sterile gloves. We probably need our PPE on this one. Well. Right. You would want to put on PPE, gown, mask, goggles because of the risk of splash. Okay. Now. I'm going to open this, just like your, now this, this is not what I want to Now both of my hands are sterile when we start. This one has a plastic sleeve on it. Yours does not have a plastic sleeve on it. And I'll talk about that later. Okay, the purpose of that. When we're doing this procedure, you're going to keep your dominant hand sterile and your non-dominant hand is going to be contaminated. Okay? So I'm going to take my catheter, I'm going to roll it up in my hand. Now, this is all sterile. 
I'm now going to take my non-dominant hand, which is hooked up to the tubing, to the canister, and I'm going to connect. You see how I'm doing that? Now, this hand is my contaminated hand. Do you see this little port? This port is it's like a drinking straw. When I put my finger here, I can suck through the straw, right? <coughs> if I take my thumb off, I can't pull through the straw because the air will come through here. Have you ever had a straw that has a hole in it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you try to, <coughs> to drink from it, and it, what happens? Can you, you don't get what you want. Same thing with this. If you put your thumb over it, it occludes that. And when you do, when you suction a patient, and your book will tell you this, never suction going down the patient. Okay? We measure from the nose to the earlobe. That's about how long we're going to go in. Okay? And when you go in, you're not going to apply any pressure. But to make sure that my suction is working, does anybody remember what suctioning, what the level of suctioning we put our whole wall unit on? Very good. <coughs> 80 to 120. All right? So, and that's medium. Usually your wall units are color-coded green, yellow, and red. So it would be right in that middle section, 80 to 120. And so then I'm going to occlude my port and suction up some of my saline to lubricate the tube. Okay? Then I'm going to go down into the tray. I'm not applying any suction. Alright? Once I get down, I'm going to alternately, you see this? And I'm going to rotate my catheter tip. Okay? That's one pass. As I'm pulling it out, you're going to go like this. Why would you think we would rotate it? To get all the way around. To get around, and this one is kind of like that um, enema tubing. It's got, this one has three holes in it. So we're not putting irritation, we're not irritating the trachea by having suction against one area, right? So we're going to rotate, and each pass should be no longer than how long? They said that on the oral suction. 10 to 15, 10 to 15 yeah. seconds. All right? Once I go down. Why is that? Huh? Why is it 10 to 15 seconds? Oh, oh, you're taking, taking their oxygen. Because you're sucking air out, okay? Not just phlegm. You're actually sucking oxygen right out of their lungs. Okay? That makes sense, doesn't it? Once I finish, this hand is contaminated. This hand is sterile. I can now take my Ambu bag. Thank you, John. You're welcome. And I can ventilate my patient. And usually when you ventilate your patient, breathe with it. Probably definitely need some help. Huh? Yeah. So I definitely need some help. <laughs> now if they can breathe on their own, you're going to have them take some deep breaths, okay? Or we would put their little oxygen back over here and let them breathe a few times. And then we can go down again. I may need to clean my tubing, suck up some of that saline, all right? We're going to go back down again. How, when you go down, I've got it down. I'm going to plug up my little port. Rotating my tube, coming out. Huh? So that's pass two. So when you go down, you go, you got the curved end going up? It doesn't really matter because you've got that cannula and it's going to go in the way it won't. Oh, okay. It's going to follow that inner tube. Okay? And if I had this patient, in, I'm kind of standing to the side <coughs> so that you can see if I were really in front of the patient or at the bedside, it would be much easier. Yes, sir. I know she wanted us to measure from ear to nose. Is that about the length of the inner yeah. catheter? Yeah. So 
We're if not you, actually getting into the tissue. We're staying inside the catheter one more time. Right. If you happen to hit the carina, which is where the bifurcation of the bronchi are, the patient, do you think that would hurt? Yes. 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 No cough, too, right? Huh? No that cough, too. Yeah. And coughing is not a bad thing, but if you hit that, come back a little bit. You don't want to go to you hit the carina. <clears throat> All right, because do you think over and over that can cause trauma? Oh, oh yeah. Yes. So you don't want to go that far. And we can do, they say three passes, 10 to 15 seconds. Okay? I kept this hand sterile the whole time. When I'm finished, I'm going to end by ventilating my patient. Is my sterile procedure over? Then I can roll this up. Take this. Yes, sir. No, we're going over this like a sterile procedure. My question is, if you have a, if you have a patient who's got a trait and they're able to do self-care, do we need to be observing them do it, or can they do it on their own? I would always observe them one time at least to make sure they're using proper technique, and that. When you're doing your nursing care plans, just about every patient of one of your nursing diagnoses can be knowledge deficit about whatever it is, whether it's about the medication that they're taking. Because don't you think patients go in the hospital and they're going to have any medications prescribed? Yes. Or it might be wound care, or it might be um, hand washing before trach care. Well, the only reason I asked is I've had a patient before that was, I don't know if he was embarrassed or what, but he did not want to do it he did it. I would probably, and that might be an education thing that you could do. You know, you could say, you could talk to him and find out if he is embarrassed. Have him talk through it. You tell me, I know you don't want to show me, and I, I respect that. <clears throat> Can you tell me the steps that you take in suctioning your But knowledge, knowledge deficit is one of those diagnoses that you could place on every patient, right? Whether it be about their activity, whether it be about their wound care, signs of infection, medications. So I'm kind of going around the block to give you a little plug on that. Yeah. Once I have this, then I can pull my glove over here, over this, and dispose of it. Some kits that you have, your catheter kit, will only have one glove. That glove's your sterile glove. <coughs> you would still need to get your clean glove to put on the other hand. <coughs> when I went to nursing school, and you think about it, and you think, well, why do I need a glove on this hand? How's that? Right. So you are exposed to secretions. When I was in nursing school, we didn't use another glove. Mm -hmm. We had a bare hand here. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Nurses were getting TB lesions. Mm -hmm. oh. oh. Right. Right there. Why would you think they get one right there? <laughs> <laughs> So that just shows you how things have changed. Um, this catheter, this one happened to have the plastic sleeve. And the nice thing about this one is you really don't have to have sterile gloves because this is protected in this sterile plastic sleeve. It goes down. And then you take it this off. You know, I can see a new student going, well, the Foley catheter, we took it out of the sleeve. We're going to rip this one off of the sleeve. But with ventilators, uh, they're in a plastic sleeve and you can use them for a certain length of time with, before disposing of it. So you have to look at hospital policy in terms of how long you can use that. 
this might be gunky, but his patient's gunky, right? And you can still clean it. <coughs> really good at that. Am I good at that? Mr. Collins is pretty good at it, too. <laughs> So that's the difference in these two. Your kits do not have the plastic sleeve on them. Um, when, we, when we look at our saline right here, we're suctioning this into our canister. Do we have to account for that on our intake and output? Yes. yes. We do. Um, how, would you, how would you do that, Jada? Is it, is it measured on the side? It does have measurements, and you can take a piece of tape and put a piece of tape vertically on here and say at the end of the Jada shift, it was at 175. <coughs> and you can mark on the tape. So that when Lauren comes in and hers is at 220, then she can just subtract and make the difference. Do we? So we have to account for this as well. So this has to become intake, right, and then output. So our output, everything in here is not going to be secretions from the lung, right? right. It's going to be secretions from the patient and our saline. So you put the saline in there? Is that what you're saying? Well, because you're using We're saline. We're sucking the saline to, right. to clean our tube, which is ultimately going to come in here. So it can't be all lung secretions. But the saline isn't going to be an accurate measure. No, right. You have to kind of guesstimate. How would you document that on the intake? You would document it on your intake and output sheet. Your intake and output sheet has sections: urine, blood, vomit, stool, okay. and then other. And I would put sputum. And then we could put one that says irrigant. So when you're writing. Not in, anything that goes on a graphic sheet um, where your intake and output would go on that graphic sheet, you would not have to put that in your nurse's note. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Collins? Because <coughs> it's redundant. So if they, if we empty their Foley bag and it has 325 cc's, we just put that on the output. This would go on the saline on the intake and the, the sputum on the output. And we would not have to put that in the nurse's note at all unless it was bloody or unless there's something unique something. about it. Okay. Same thing about the urine, if it was cloudy and foul odor and you know, I would have put that in terms of the numbers really on that graphic sheet. Okay. About how much saline do you usually use? Like, you may need more than what you put here. It depends on the patient. It depends on how thick their secretions are. Yes, sir. With that being said, would vital signs only really be important, um, maybe on an initial nurse's note? And then it's going to go in your, <coughs> in your um, graphic sheets. Could you put thick secretions? Sure. On your nurse's note? Just like the color. Such in patient with results of greenish thick secretion, copious amount. And this is not like a wound where you have to be specific, right? Because can you, you have a mental image of copious or scant? Yeah. And the fact that you're doing frequent suction <coughs> is gonna take some. And certainly I would document <laughs> that patient's respiratory status. Once I suction him, then I'm gonna listen to his breath sounds. I'm gonna look at his color, I'm gonna check his respiratory looking and feeling. Do you think this is uncomfortable for the patient? Yes. Sometimes patients may need to be pre-medicated, especially in the trays. Now, I've gotten him suctioned, so now we can do trach care. Okay. Is this clean technique? 
This is this sterile technique. <coughs> Do you go through the whole rebloating process of sterile technique? I would. 